connecting neighborhoods across the Big Bend in South Georgia, telling stories from within our communities. This is ABC 27. We always are going to bounce back. We're always going to come from the ashes. Resilience after tragedy. Six months ago today, Hurricane Idalia damaging homes and businesses in Taylor County. There's people that lost a lot. You know, they may have lost a home. Neighbors helping neighbors even today, six months after the storm. I have never been a part of a community that's come together as tight-knit as this community has and helped everybody. ABC 27 News at 6 starts right now. What a road to recovery it has been six months after Hurricane Idalia made landfall on the Big Bend coast. I'm Channing Frampton live here in Steenhatchie right outside Roy's restaurant, which was swamped by the storm surge Idalia brought ashore. It is now back open and customers are coming in for dinner tonight. We are on the road tracking recovery six months after this storm from the shores of Steenhatchie all the way up through Valdosta. We start our coverage where the storm made landfall in Keaton Beach. There's people that lost a lot. You know, they may have lost a home. Spiridon Abajaris lives right on the water in Keaton Beach. While his house was spared, he says they are still paying for damage at the RV park his family owns. Did, did the storm impact the business at all or bookings of people uh, wanting to come here? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, take, it took, you know, almost two weeks to get it back, oper you know, to get it back in operation. Yeah. So, um, so it did. And then the repair cost, I mean, you didn't figure that in. Right. And then so, and then what do you do? You can't absorb that, so you have to pass that on to the customer. You know, and so that's tough. He's one of several business owners working to get back to normal six months after Idalia sent a storm surge plowing into this community. This just come out in the last two days. Jim Zerberick is one of those business owners. He's been operating out of this marina on the Steenhatchie River for 24 years. This is some more debris I pulled out two days ago. Six months after the storm, he's still working to pull debris out of the water. For the first two to three months, a boat like mine just couldn't safely leave here. And we didn't have fuel. Fuel for the boat he was prepared to lose during the storm. For the day before, I came over here to my boat and I said goodbye to my boat. Had this boat for 30 some years. It's like a child, right? His wife, Patty, snapped this photo showing Edalia's surge flooding in the area. And to give you an idea of how high that storm surge actually got in this marina, you can use this pole as a guide. It's about nine feet above the waterline. He says the water got all the way up to the top of this post. As the water clears and supplies return, Zerbrick's working to get back to the thing he loves, fishing on the Gulf. So we're going to try to just get back. It's slow. It's like anything, uh, recoveries, you never get back on your feet, it's a, it's a while. It's been five plus months now. While neighbors like Abajaris give thanks for the support they've gotten since the storm. There was some damage and a lot of work to be done, but so, yeah, very grateful. And though a lot of progress has been made, there's still a lot of work to be done. Hopefully the weather in the days ahead will be good for that. Our team coverage con continues now with first to know meteorologist Elizabeth Copeland. Liz, how's the weather looking for this evening? Yeah, I get It's cloudy and a little cooler, but for the evening, for the evening tonight, we've got a cloudy and cooler evening. We've got a, a lot of birds already sucked up for the night right there on the dock. A couple of those boats are still making their way in. It's a little chilly, so all of our fans are out there on the docks as far as seagulls go. Not really out here on the patio where it's a little cooler this evening, mostly cloudy and a little windy. Now, again, six months ago, Hurricane Dahlia making landfall just north of here in Keaton Beach. It was about 125 mile per hour sustained winds at that point. Right now, our winds are right there, right around 15, 17 miles per hour in Keaton Beach and then Steenhatchie. But, you know, not a lot of that wind is going to be impacting us over the next several days. As far as temperatures go, we're in the 60s early this afternoon. We'll be in the 60s over the next several hours for most of our areas. And cloud cover tonight actually not allowing those temperatures to drop too much. We'll be in the 50s for overnight lows. But we do need to talk about some impacts for a weekend as far as rain goes. We'll talk about the incoming showers in our forecast coming up here shortly. Thanks.
Thanks, Liz. There are things like bread. You can get meat, canned goods, anything a family could need for both a nutritious and sustainable meal. I'm Shamari Morrison, your downtown neighborhood reporter in Perry. And Second Harvest of the Big Bend is having a food distribution six months after Hurricane Idalia hit this area. And people were lined up for blocks to get their spot. Oh, sir, you're good to go. Car after car, neighbor after neighbor, all giving their thanks for an extra meal going home with them. I'm picking up from a neighbor, Yvonne, and I'm picking up for myself. Thursday, ABC 27 teaming up with Second Harvest to feed families. And it marks six months since Hurricane Idalia hit this area. Idalia widening gaps in access to food. 53%, so over half of those households are living paycheck to paycheck. So any type of disruption might mean that families having to make delicate decisions on where they spend their limited dollars. The second harvest allowed more than 500 families to get food on Thursday. It ranged from non-perishable foods to meat, and it was open to the entire community who spent hours in line trying to get a box. Second Harvest says from landfall through October 31st, they've distributed more than 1.3 million pounds of food to hurricane affected areas in our neighborhoods. 282,924 right here in Taylor County. I am grateful, very grateful. As these boxes begin to go, everyone who is in line might not be able to get a food box today. But Second Harvest of the Big Bend is and continues to be in the Perry area. We have details at WTXL.TV about where you or family who you may know and is in need of food can get some. But for now, let's turn things over to ABC 27's Maya Sargent. And she tells us about where the community is six months post Idalia and how Taylor County wants to make sure that this community continues to stay strong. A community that refuses to give up. I'm a sergeant in Perry. Neighbors tell me it's that resilience that has allowed Taylor County to rebuild as much as it has since Hurricane Adalia. Do you need help? Do you need help? A phrase echoing around town even six months later as neighbors continue recovery and rebuilding efforts. From Hurricane Adalia still exists in Taylor County. You'll see some of the trees that still are leaning. Along with blue tarp on roofs. Pastor Willie Anderson of Victory International Prophetic Ministries shows me the reminders of the impact of Adalia. This is of the side of the church was torn off. But despite this damage, some of which you can still see driving around, recovery efforts have never faltered in Taylor County. Boots on the ground. It's just, it's, you know, that, that, that phrase really uh, exemplifies the city of Perry, Florida. He's one of the many organizations who've been working to make sure needs are met. More than dry their clothes. Along with churches, the city, the county, law enforcement, first responders, and many more agencies, even outside of Taylor County lines. It's neighbors helping neighbors. We've got siding all down. Other people didn't look for us to bounce back as fast as we did. Tina Allswain stayed with her daughter during the storm. You could feel it pick up off of the brick. Once it was over, her focus immediately turned to helping the community. You're in my community. We're going to get this out of your yard. A neighborly love that has resonated for and around this town since it was hit. That's the type of county you want to raise your children in. It's made full recovery feel attainable. Dan Anderson runs the food ministry at First United Methodist Church in Perry. He agrees. You know, where money's having to go from from food into repairs. Although he says lines at their food distribution in collaboration with Second Harvest have gotten longer since the storm by about 25%. He thinks that's because impacts of the hurricane were aggravated by the closure of the Georgia Pacific Foley Cellulose Mill. He says in the next six months, he'd like to see more jobs brought into the community. Danny Collins, chairman at the Perry Taylor County Chamber of Commerce, says that's a big focus in this recovery effort. 
We need to ensure that, that we're attracting new employers to the community. That's going to be a, a big part of this, working with the Taylor County Development Authority, uh, County Commission, and City Council. And he tells me they're working to retain the strong force that already resides in Taylor County. Pastor Willie is more than hopeful for the future. We always are going to bounce back. We're always going to come from the ashes. And that those scars around Taylor County will eventually fade. Danny tells me area leaders are speaking with figureheads in other communities who have been through similar situations to learn and adjust. He tells me they're optimistic about the future of Taylor County. In Perry, Mayor Sargent, ABC 27. Our neighbors in South Georgia also saw impacts from Hurricane Idalia. We're following up with Valdosta neighbors who are still trying to pick up the pieces six months later.